Today I'm on one of the most vicious class muscle bikes ever made, the original Yamaha V-Max. This bike's a gorgeous survivor. We just put close to $4,000 of uh, services and parts into it, uh, and it runs awesome, it looks awesome, but while we were test riding it, we blew second gear. It's gonna need some transmission work. We're selling it as is. We've got about a two year backlog on bikes and we just don't have the time to do it. Well, listen, listen to the engine on this thing. Yamaha hit the nail on the head when they built this bike. This is always one of my favorites. Uh, this thing looks like a like a um, road warrior machine. What an awesome piece. This bike runs absolutely amazing. Uh, it's just been completely gone through by the motorcycle restoration experts at the New England Motorcycle Museum. Uh, we can't even work on this bike. Uh, it's a good <coughs> piece we've been working on. Vintage Japanese bikes since the 70s. And uh, he's built multiple concourse AMA award winning championship bikes. And uh, I'll go over with, with you in a second here um, what exactly he did to the bike. Um, I have the work order here and we did quite a bit of work. We did $4,249 worth of work on this bike, okay? Uh, just under $5,000 was invested into it. We did another VMAX several months ago. We auctioned that one off. One, well, that one off. That one bought well over $10,000. These bikes are bringing top dollar on the market these days. Uh, matter of fact, the NADA value on this bike is $11,400. Um, I think we got twelve five for the last one we sold. Uh, I have to check our records. But uh, this bike is in excellent condition. Uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous machine. Um, and like I said, we just put just under $5,000 into the bike. Let me go through with you step by step what we did to the bike. The first thing we did is we checked the cylinder. Oh, well, actually, they, they, they detailed the bike first thing. It was professionally steam cleaned, washed, waxed, polished. The paint was touched up on the frame in a couple of areas, and it was completely detailed front to back. It's about a six hour process. Then uh, the next thing they did is check the cylinder compression, and obviously the cylinder compression is perfect on it. This thing runs amazing. They installed four new spark plugs, inspected the wires and the coils, and all the wiring and everything checked out beautifully. Uh, they changed the engine oil and filter, and they drained the old fuel from the tank and cleaned the tank out and inspected it. It's in perfect condition. They installed new OEM fuel filters and ins inspected the fuel lines, and those were in mint condition. The carburetors, these are really uh, not the easiest carburetor set to work on. It's a bank of four carburetors, they're downdraft carburetors. The, the whole intake and carburetor system was removed, 
and uh, they performed a complete clean adjust and rebuild. We separated all four carburetors and they were cleaned ultrasonically. They're completely taken apart. The gaskets, the O-rings, um, the air CT valves, the jet rubber plugs, everything was dismantled right down to the jets and all that was replaced. Brand new gaskets, brand new O-rings, brand new air cut valves, brand new jet rubber plugs, all brand new. The cars are reassembled, tuned to perfection while the bike was running and synchronized. This bike runs absolutely freaking amazing. The carburetor, the carburetors alone are worth a lot of money on this bike in this condition. Uh, the air box was clean, inspected the air filter, and that had a brand new Canon air filter in it, so that was just boiled and replaced. It has a uh, Canon replacement aftermarket filter, which opens up the breathing of the intake to work with the custom four into uh, two custom exhausts that this has. The um, throttle pipe was removed and cleaned and lubricated, pressure lube and the throttle cables were then installed, reinstalled and adjusted the free play on it. So the, the, um, the, the, the react, it feels like brand, not only brand new, but um, like a well tuned and well lubed uh, brand new throttle assembly. Um, we added fresh fuel with stable in it and tested the fuel pump. The fuel pump is 100% perfect, had the right pressure. I installed new UASA battery, top of the line UASA battery, cleaned the positive and negative terminals, and um, tested all the electrical functions on the bike. We replaced all four carb holders, the rubber intakes. Uh, these rubber intakes on the cars, um, the ones that hold the carburetor in, needed to be replaced. That's part of what we did with, with the intake and carburetor service, service uh, on the bike. Uh, the original ones had a little bit of uh, dry rot because they're the original uh, 30 year old, 32 year old rubbers. Um, we were, uh, drained and topped off the coolant, uh, removed and cleaned the, the, the filled coolant <coughs> reservoir. Um, we inspected and adjusted the steering head bearings. We inspected and adjusted and lubricated the wheel bearings. Uh, the brake pads and rotors were all checked and you can see they're in excellent condition. The tires and wheels are in excellent condition and um, we uh, uh, adjusted the tire pressures. So as you can see, it still has the nubs on the side of the tire. It treads at least 70, 75%. These are Dunlop qualifiers, tires, uh, front and rear. And um, uh, the rear tire looks like it's in brand new condition as does the front. So uh, you got a mixed set of tires on there. Um, we have a stock set of mufflers that go with this bike too. We'll take a picture of those to include with it. Uh, the stock mufflers have some internal issues. They make a little bit of rattling noise. We did put the stock mufflers on here and run the bike with it, and it just runs a lot better with the aftermarket exhaust. It opens it right up. But if you want to make this thing 100% mint original stock, we have the exhaust. You can put it on there. You got to figure out what's rattling around inside of them. Uh, they might need a little adjustment or repair. Um, the hydraulic clutch, this motorcycle has a hydraulic clutch, which is way ahead of its time. Uh, we cleaned out the hydraulic clutch master cylinder reservoir, and we flushed it, we filled it, we, we bled it of, of all, of, all the uh, air. So um, quite a bit of work was done on the bike. We went through it top to bottom, front to back, and then we took it out and road tested it and went ripping around like I just did on the bike. And we don't baby these things when we road test them. We, we run them hard to make sure that there's no issues. And a weakness was discovered on the motorcycle. The second gear in the transmission uh, needs to be replaced. It's about an eight hour job. We've got a two year backlog on service, so we had to uh, draw a line on the sand. We're selling the motorcycle as is. You're gonna have to figure out how to fix that transmission, or maybe you already have a VMAX, one that was laid down and you wanna mint one or replace the parts with, or maybe you need the carburetors or whatever the situation may be, uh, but the transmission is gonna to need to be serviced. Um, I'm gonna go over the parts list on the motorcycle. You've got a brand new UASA top of the line YB16AL A2 battery. Um, it's got a, a brand new carb rebuild kit, a brand new air, a carb air cut valve, a brand new OEM cap for the carburetor passage, a brand new um, four of the OEM carb cap, uh, uh, carb cap uh, passage uh, large, because it's a small one and a large one. So um, a brand new OEM intake rubber duct, brand new OEM fuel filter, four NGK dr 8 ea 9 spark plugs, um, brand new OEM oil filter, brand new OEM O-ring for the oil filter, and a brand new OEM gasket for the drain plug, um, which is something most people usually overlook. It's got four quarts, Maxima 20 weight 50 oil in it, brand new oil, uh, Maxima contact cleaner, we use the whole can on it. Um, it has brand new MGO uh, hand, hand grips on here, which are uh, reproductions of the originals. Uh, brand new hand grips, they're beautiful. Uh, uh, 
brake fluid front and rear. The brake system was completely serviced. The brakes were flushed, bled, and they worked beautifully. Um, and new fuel was uh, new, new fluid was put in, in them. Uh, we cleaned out the front brake master cylinder reservoir, and we flushed, filled, and bled it with brake brake fluid. That's front and rear. Okay, that was done on the rear also. We performed the full carburetor, carburetor sync synchronization and the mixture screw adjustment and the idle speed adjustment. The carbs are tuned to perfection. The mechanic that does it here is the best in the industry. He's been doing it forever. He's not a kid. He knows how to tune these bikes to perfection and this one went beautifully because of his work. Like I said, he's built multiple concourse AMA championship winning motorcycles. So. Um, we checked the charging system output, which is perfect on the motorcycle. We confirmed the proper operation of all electrical functions, and then we test sort of to confirm, perform that proper operation of the brake, suspension, clutch, and transmission. Uh, so, like I, like I said, um, the, uh, the, the, trans, the second gear and the transmission's got some issues. So, the bike's rideable as it is, but I would highly recommend fixing it before you, you do much riding on it. So, we have a total of uh, 42 hours of labor. It took a full week to go through the full motorcycle, top to bottom, front to back. Um, most of our competitors are, are billing their work out at 120 to 150 an hour for motorcycle restoration services. And our work is certainly worth that. We're only billing out at $80 an hour. So at 80 bucks an hour, which good luck finding someone that can do what we do for 80 bucks an hour, you've got $3,360 worth of service and $627 worth of parts, the total being out the door with tax, $4,249 to take this bike and get it in the perfect running condition that it is right now. Unfortunately, it's got that issue with the transmission, so this isn't gonna be an $11,000 VMAX. The reserve is set much less than, than, than what the bike's worth, and it's gonna leave you plenty of room for a little sweat equity to buy this bike, and then over the winter, buy yourself a second gear and, and have that transmission done. Um, I have the registration on the motorcycle right here. Connecticut's a non-tidal state on antiques. This motorcycle is considered an antique classic. It's a 1985, so it's 32 years old. Um, has an NADA value of $11,400. And uh, we're selling it with a Connecticut DMV bill of sale and the previous registration, which will work in pretty much every state that I know of. Uh, check with your state. Uh, Cycle World did a write-up on the VMAX that I want to share with you. Uh, Every motorcycle has a reason for being. With some, that reason just is more obvious than with others. In the case of the Yamaha's all new 1985 VMAX, that reason couldn't be any more obvious. Power. From the don't mess with me snarl of its exhaust to the way it's massive, 1198cc V4 engine literally dominates the bike's appearance. The VMAX is power distilled to its purest, rawest elements. VMAX doesn't even have to go fast to prove that it is fast. Somehow, you and everyone else who sees this bike already knows it's fast. It doesn't use the guise of a road racer replica or a high-tech canyon carver as an excuse to have power. It has power for the sake of power. The VMAX is powerful. When you whack open the throttle on this machine, things start happening immediately and in rapid succession. At about 3,000 RPM, the VMAX lunges forward with more low RPM power than is available on any bike previously offered to the public. Within a fraction of a second, you're firmly pitched back against a sharp step in the Yamaha seat while the tack needle springs upward with alarming speed. Another quarter second and you reach what would be called the power band on any other motorcycle, but is more like some kind of hyper thrust on the VMAX. Aside from the blazing acceleration it provides, what sets the Max's engine apart from the other powerful motors is that it has power everywhere. Off the bottom, it's torquier than a Honda Goldwing. On top, it hits harder than a Kawasaki 900 Ninja. And from bottom to top, the power band is broader than that of the BMW K100. This engine sets a new, new benchmark. And that kind of combination just doesn't spring to being overnight. The VMAX is an end product of a long series of heavily tested prototypes. The bike is a tried and proven solution. With all the talk of this ungodly power and unprecedented torque, you might wonder what the VMAX's quarter mile times are. Well, 10.89 seconds. This thing is fast. And once the big Yamaha gets a hold of the ground, there's nothing you can buy off the show and tour that can rock it down the road as quickly. Even when you aren't spellbound by the VMAX's incredible engine and the amazing exhaust sound coming from the four and the two custom exhaust. The, there are plenty of things to talk about. The bike's surprising handling, for one. We know the VMAX cosmetically leans towards the cruiser end of the motorcycle spectrum. It's much more sport-oriented than its appearance lets on. <coughs> 
the bike is decidedly more agile than Honda V65 Magna, and in fact, it's on par with, with most other sport bikes uh, of this size. It tucks gracefully in the turns, especially those with a long sweeping variety, and the front wheel never gets the slightest hint of losing traction. Another thing you won't have to do when playing sport bike riding on the VMAX is worry about the bike wall and around on the suspension, the rear end in particular. Yamaha feels that the VMAX will be ridden hard and fast, and so gave the rear suspension correspondingly firm springing and damping rates. The VMAX is a strange combination of tradition and a mix with the original thinking. Radical breaks from tradition like the three-piece seat, the dish aluminum rear wheel, all these styling links as well as the very existence of the bike itself are in, 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 indicative of Yamaha's wish to establish some new traditions and they did. This bike dominated the streets for over 20 years and it is a classic now. It's going up in value. The NADA recognizes that. The motorcycle industry recognizes that. That's why this bike has a value of 11400 That's why the last one we did sold for over $12,000. And as long as the rider has a conservative throttle hand, the VMAX can also yield good fuel mileage on the road, which is the last reason I'd ever buy one of these damn things. Uh, this is this thing's designed to raise the hair on your neck and get your adrenaline flowing and get your testosterone building again. This thing's this thing's a this thing's a hairy chested beast of a motorcycle and it sounds nasty. So if you want to buy a bike that's only going up in value, buy this VMAX. If you want to buy buy a bike that's uh, has an NADA value of eleven thousand four hundred for a fraction of that price that just had four thousand dollars worth of services done to it, then buy this bike and understand you're gonna to need to put some sweat equity in it. It needs, it needs a second gear in the transmission, but other than that, it's a fantastic machine. It does include the original exhaust, like I said, um, and the proceeds are going to a great, a great cause. It's going to fund the New England Motorcycle Museum restoration. Uh, we've got about $300,000 Delta we're trying to fill, so we're selling off a lot of these classic old bikes that we had on display in the museum. This bike's on display in the New England Motorcycle Museum now. It's the only VMAX we have. I hate to see it go, so if you want to buy it and leave it here for a while, that's great. If you want to pick it up immediately, you can do that too. Um, if you have any questions about the bike, give us a call at 860-454-7024. Um, if you want to come look at it, we're here 9 to 6, Monday through Friday. Good luck, bidding. God bless America.